Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In today's video, we're going to learn all about angular forms. Do check out our other videos on the angular series. So before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So first, let's go ahead and look at what's in store for us. First, we'll understand what angular forms are. Then we'll look at the different types of form building supported by Angular. Next up, we'll get acquainted with features like form control and group control. And we learn all of this with the help of a simple demo. So without further ado, let's begin. So what exactly are Angular forms? Now I'm sure every application that you use comes with certain amount of form filling, correct? Be it your login credentials or your sign up forms or any sort of registration forms, etc. So forms are an integral part of a web application. You need forms to update your profile or to enter sensitive information or also to perform any sort of data related tasks. So now let's look at the different types of form building supported by Angular. First up, Angular supports two types of form building. First, you have the template driven approach. And second, you have the reactive approach. Now let's look at them one by one. So talking about template driven approach, in this method, the conventional form tag is used to create forms. So Angular automatically interprets and creates a form object with the help of the directives. Now controls can be added to the form using the ng model tag. Now multiple controls can be grouped using the ng control group module. So it basically uses several module classes to provide controls. Now, if you don't get this, don't worry. You'll understand better when I'm showing you the demo. Next up is JSON values. So form value can be generated using the form.value object. Form data is exported as JSON values when the submit method is called. Lastly, basic HTML validations can be used to validate the form fields. In the case of custom validations, Directives can be used. So arguably, this method is the simplest way to create an Angular form. So moving on to the active approach. Now this approach is the programming paradigm revolving around data flows and propagation of change. Now with reactive forms, the component directly manages the data flows between the form controls and the data models. Now reactive forms are code driven unlike template driven approach. Reactive forms eliminate the anti-pattern of updating the data model via two-way data binding. So it does not use two-way data binding. And typically, a reactive form control creation is synchronous and can be unit tested with synchronous programming techniques. So now, let's go ahead and look at form control and form group. So consider a typical form consisting of fields like name, age, and location. Now a form control is basically a class that enables validation of these fields. For each input field, an instance of this class is created. Now these instances help check the values of the field and see if they're either touched, untouched, dirty, pristine, valid, invalid, and so on. So this allows you to check every field for the value. It makes it easier to understand which field's value is invalid or which field has not been entered, etc. Now moving on to form group. So a form group class represents a group of controls. A form can have multiple group controls. The form group returns true if all the controls are valid and provides validation errors if there are any. So I hope this was clear. So moving ahead, Let's look at the demo to explain all of these features. I'm sure it will become extremely clear once you look at the demo. So for that, let's head to our VS code. So back in my VS code, I've created a component called form component. And um, I've also included the Simply Learn logo just to beautify the appearance. So once you execute the code, this is what you're going to see on your browser. So you just have the logo at the moment. The first thing we need to do is we'll have to import the forms module. All right. So, oh, uh, but before we begin, let me tell you what the use case is. 
So we're going to be creating a user registration form, which is going to include four fields. That is the first name, last name, email ID and a password. All right. So now let me show you how to import the forms module. So in your main uh, app.module.ts file, you'll have to import forms module from Angular forms. All right. And then uh, in your imports, you'll have to just call it here. All right. So this is just a simple step. And now once you're done with that, let's go ahead and start our form creation. So here in my component.html, let's enclose the entire form within a div tag. So here, let me say div class is a container within which, let me just have one heading it says user registration. All right. And now let's go ahead and create our form. So first, let me just say form. Now I'm going to create a div class for every field. So say div class equals form group. I'll explain it to you a little later. Now first let's create a label. So label tag for basically it's the first name. So let me just say first name. And the tag will basically have first name again. All right, and let me just break the line. Next, we have the field. So let's say input type is text. Name is first name. And we have a class, which is the form control class. All right. So this we have to do for all the other fields. So let me just copy this and paste it like four times. I'll also add the tag pre for spacing. Let's do that here. And finally, we'll have the button. So let's just add that here with a type submit and let's just say submit on the button. So now uh, let's go ahead and change these values here. So here let me just change it to last name here as well. And here as well. And in this case, it is going to be email. So let me just change it here. And finally, we have password. So let's add that here. All right, so let's save this and just have a look at our browser. So there we go. We have our uh, user registration form ready, but I would like to uh, align it to the center. So let me just do that. So here in my CSS file, I'm just going to uh, align all the div tags to the center and the label tag to the left. So let me save this and look at the browser now. And there we go. We have our registration form with a logo. So this is how you create a simple form. Now we'll have to add a directive called ng model. Now this directive when added into the input tag will provide form controls to every input field. All right. So here let's just go ahead and say ng model. That is it. So let me just copy this and paste it for every other field. 
All right. Let me save this. And back in my browser, let me inspect. And here you can see different types of classes like ng untouched, ng pristine, ng valid are added. Right. So this indicates that Angular has recognized the form tag and it has added these classes to the form as well as all the fields. So this is achieved when you add the ng model directive in your input tag. Now back in my VS code. Now every form has an output property attached to it called ng submit. All right. So this property can be bound within a method that method called the submit method. So once submitted, this method is called. Right. So once we click on the submit button, this method has to be called. So to include that, we'll have to just say form ng submit equals submit. All right. So now we have to define the submit method in our component.ts file. So here, let me just go to our component.ts file and let me just get rid of unnecessary code here. And let's define a function called submit. And then here, let me just console log form submitted. All right, so let me just get rid of this as well. It's unnecessary here. Let's save this. So what it means is that every time you click on the submit button, this method is called. All right. So let's just have a look at the browser. So first let's go to our console. And when I click on submit, it says form submitted. All right. So the next crucial step is to generate JavaScript representation. Now we'll have to make use of another directive called ng form that is assigned to a template variable. Okay, so this JavaScript representation helps with validating all the fields. So I'll help you understand that better. So back in our HTML file, let's just create a variable first. Let's call it login. All right. And say ng form. Okay. Now the ng form object includes the JavaScript representation. So now while you're calling the submit method, you're going to pass login as a parameter. So let's just say login here. And in my TS file, again, let's just say login. And along with it, I want login to be displayed. So I say login again. So now let's save this. And if you have a look at the browser, let's click on submit. And now here you can see the JavaScript representation. So within form, I can check for email or say first name. And here for this field first name, you can see different properties attached. You can see invalid. Is it invalid or is it untouched, which is true or are there any errors? So this basically gives you all information about the particular field. So we can make use of this feature to validate the information. So we're going to learn about that in our next segment. Moving on to form validation. One way to ensure that incorrect fields are not submitted is by disabling the submit button. Correct. Now, apart from this, you can also specify certain properties in your input tag for the corresponding input field. Now, um, let's say that the fields that now let's say that the fields can't be empty and the form only accepts names with the minimum length of two and the maximum length of seven. All right. So here in my input tag, I just mentioned required, meaning this field cannot be empty and min length to two and max length to say seven. All right. So to check this, let's go to our browser. And here, let me submit the form without filling the first name. 
and evidently there has to be an error. So when I submit it and I look here, what's in forms and here controls, and my first name, you can see that an error is shown. Here it says required equals true. That means that there is one error. Now you can make use of these form control objects. You can leverage form control objects to ensure field validation and display a message whenever an error occurs. Right? So to do that, you need to access these objects like errors or invalid or touched. All of these properties or objects need to be accessed. For that, we'll have to create a template variable. And then this variable is assigned to this object. So back in our VS code, let's create a variable. Let me call it name. And let's say ng model. All right. Here the variable name receives the control object. So here back in my browser, when I submit again without the first name, you can see that the invalid property is set to true. Correct. So this helps us use this property to alert the user with the help of a simple if logic. So back in my VS code, let me create another div tag. Within which I mention ng if, within which I'm going to use a simple if logic. So let's say ng if name, which is our template variable, name dot touched and name dot invalid is true, right? Then I'm going to alert. So I'm going to make use of an alert here. Let's say alert danger. All right. So in my CSS file, I'll have to mention the simple styling for alert. So here, let me just say. So we're going to have the background color red for danger. All right. And here I'm going to display the message invalid in bold. So now let's go back to our browser and check it. So let me proceed without entering the last name. It says invalid here. So this was a simple demonstration to show you form validation. Of course, you can modify the code depending on your requirement. Say suppose the length of the first name is too short, then you can alert the user with a different message or uh, suppose they have missed out on filling a form field, then you can again alert the user. So you can basically make use of the nested if condition, right? Now, just to help you understand that better, let me just show it to you. Now, back in my HTML file, instead of invalid, let me have another tag, a paragraph tag, within which I make use of ng if again. Now, ng if, name dot errors dot required is true then i display the message first name required all right and if the length of the first name is not two now, if the length of the first name is less than two, then I'm going to display another message. So let me just say name dot errors dot min length. If this is true, then I'm going to say sorry, short first name. All right. So let's save this and have a look at the browser. When I proceed without providing the name, it says first name required. But when I type in one character, it says sorry, short first name. But if I type in another character, it accepts. So I hope this made you understand how form validation works. 
So this was just a simple demonstration again. Now I highly recommend you explore these properties and play around with these objects. Uh, trust me, it's really fun. So uh, I hope this tutorial helped you out. So with that, we come to the end of the session. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Watch out for more videos on Angular. And I'll see you next time. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.